when and when I was going over that in um I mean, like in an ideal scenario, I'd be in a parking lot out outside a movie theater, but I worked in the movie theater at the time, so it was probably upstairs <laughs> in the booth where I, I said, like, I shouldn't come out of a movie with time travel and robots and say, that heart transplant thing was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have strong feelings about Terminator Salvation. And a big part of it is that it didn't really go hard at anything. Like, it kind of played it safe, which I think is a bummer. I can see that. One thing that I liked about Genesis that I definitely liked a lot more than Salvation was the portrayal of John Connor in this film. I, I agree. Okay, so in Salvation... the the. With three movies of, like, Terminator, Terminator 2, Terminator 3, we're told that he's this leader. And then we get to Terminator Salvation, and he's a back burner person in this military. He's not making any decisions. He's just kind of on this slow burn for people to follow him. And my impression of John Connor from the first three films is that he's this leader the whole time. And so the way they show him here where he's giving these motivational speeches, which I'm sorry, Christian Bale just can't do. Um, and the, the mystique that he has and the, he's leading these missions. This is the John Connor that I've wanted to see in this timeline. But I just, again, I don't really like this actor as John Connor. And I, that's like a problem that I've had in all of these movies. Like I know this guy from a TV show called Brotherhood where he was in this show. They were, um, I think they were uh, Irish gangsters in New York. Uh, Annabeth Gish from X-Files was on it. And yep. the guy that played Lorca was in it. He was his brother and it was a good show, but that's what I know him for. So whenever I see him around, that's what I think of, but I don't really think he's that good of an actor. He's in, second Planet of the Apes uh, movie, and again, I don't really like him in that one, but I don't know, I just don't really like this guy as an actor on a whole. What about so. Serenity? Is he in Serenity? Not I, the Firefly one. The most not recent, that oh, Serenity. The, I, the most recent <laughs> Matthew McConaughey one. Oh, I haven't seen that, so... Oh, you gotta see it, bro. <laughs> it's not good. Uh, J Jason Clark, no relation to Amelia Clark, just for the record. <laughs> so even though they play mother and son and have the same last name in real life, they're not related. Uh, no, Brandon, I, I do like what you're saying about that. I will say some of the parts that I did like about this film, even though I really don't like it whatsoever, <laughs> is the the opening. Uh, because we got to see the future. What do I always? What have I been saying on this podcast every time? Like, I want to see the future. I don't know. I haven't listened to the other episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I just, I serious question. Serious question. What have you been saying? What I have been saying, Max, here we go. I want to see, here we go, I want to see the future war, all right? I want to have a film where you see the purple lasers and the nighttime fights and John and Kyle mm -hmm. Reese together working on things, finding the time machine, sending Kyle back in time, the Terminators, closing the time loop, right? Mm -hmm. This is what I want to see. Like, if, 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 if you told me after Terminator 2, you get one more Terminator movie, what do you want? I, that would be my Terminator 3, mm -hmm. the future war, whatever. You want and stop we finally motion got it for robots about... and, like, rear projection backdrops. Yes. And, like... And, and... Animatronic skeletons <laughs> that you don't see the full body of because you can't because they're puppet right. controlled. That's what I want. Foreground That's what I want. debris that is unidentifiable, yeah. but, like, maybe it was a car. <laughs> and a guy <laughs> holding a gun that's probably not a real gun and shooting beams of light off into the distance. Yeah, I mean, I'm on board for that. Although... Um, I don't know. That sounds more like a show. <laughs> Perhaps a TV show yeah. called Sarah Connor Chronicles, <laughs> which we did get some feature war in that too. But yeah, I don't know. We, we got, we finally got for about 15 minutes mm -hmm. in this film uh, and which I don't like how they have the opening credits over it. Like, can we just Terminator three did that same thing where it's like, here's some credits over mm -hmm. footage of the film. I don't like that when it, for a movie, that's a TV show deal. Like for a movie, I want an opening credit sequence, either the beginning or the end. Don't put it over the action. Guys, so we got that. It's whatever year this is, you got to get things done fast. You know, uh, <laughs> people have no attention span. You got to, you got to go fast. You got to go hard in the opening. I mean, like the guild has its rules about like credits. You know, if you do, if you don't do an opening mm -hmm. credits, you got to have like two credits at the end of the movie, which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But whatever. Fair enough. Fair enough. But but ultimately, we got to see what I always wanted to see with the, the sliver of the future war, sending Kyle Reese back in time. I did like the, I did like the characterization of John Connor, where he's talking to Kyle Reese. He's like, hey, man, there's any other way I'd take it. You know, and then at the end, he's like, hey, this is where my knowledge of the future ends. Right. I, I like mm -hmm. that. 
about him. And and I yeah. do, as much as like I like Christian Bale as an actor and as Batman and stuff, uh, this is a much more appropriate John Connor. I do agree, and I did like that opening sequence of the film. Mm-hmm. I don't think th- I don't I don't know if that's like a like a Christian Bale like thing. I think that that is the problem of of the interpretation of Terminator Salvation being like we need to ground John Connor and make him a, a realistic leader. We need to know why he's such a good leader, why he's actually able to save humanity from the machines because we see him in Terminator 2 and he's kind of just a punk. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> we don't really get a vibe. Like he seems to have leadership qualities. Like he's like that 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 dorky kid is following him around. Like he's a god. Mm-hmm. And like <laughs> honestly, when you're ten years old and you can hack an ATM, you are a god to all <laughs> ten year olds. Yes. But like as a warrior, it's hard to see. So they're trying to sort of figure out how to make him a like a like a believable military leader. And like to do that, you got to kind of say, yeah, he rose up through the ranks and took command of Techcom and like crushed Skynet with his bare hands or feet or a bunch of other guys with guns. And like that's the thought process that they're going through. But like we know that like there was more at play than just military leadership. There is time travel involved. And Genesis went for the thing that seems kind of obvious that that John Connor knows what happens. Mm -hmm. Like he knows the strategies. He's got information that was relayed uh, through at least two parties uh, to him. And he's been able to put pieces together over the years and go like, okay, so Skynet was here and I should go here and we should set up defenses here and we're going to go here and we're going to actually win on this day at this time. And these are the people that are going to be with me. And uh, the rest of them don't really matter because they didn't come up in conversation. So they probably (laughs) don't survive. Uh, So like he knows a lot of stuff that plays into it. And Genesis does say like, yeah, he's, he's cheating. And that's fair. That's exactly right. That is exactly what he would do, and it's why it would work. And I love the idea. I mean, I don't know how good it would work as a as a movie because the idea of John Connor on a daily basis wrestling with the question of whether or not his actions are preordained, that is not a Terminator movie. It's a movie I would love to watch. John Connor <laughs> writing in a diary saying, like, I sent a man to his death today. Did I have a choice? Mm. And then there's a shot of a tree. <laughs> and then there's a shot of, like, a like a, like a swing that's just, like, <laughs> swinging in the distance. Tire swing. And then it just stops. Is this film directed by Terrence Malick? Absolutely it is. <laughs> and honestly, I'm I'm pitching it right now. This is a great idea. It's not a Terminator movie. It's called Terminator. I don't care that it's inappropriate tonally or thematically or, or from a market standpoint. None of that matters to me. I like the idea of seeing that side of the story because that side of the story matters because it matters for John Connor's actions in the future and it matters for the events of the past because the the nature of like you don't really have free will even if your actions are not predetermined they still are not free choices is an important part of this franchise so something you've said there has reminded me of something that i've been wanting to ask zach again so Zach and Mike both said in Terminator 3 that they didn't like how they Terminator 3 completely misunderstands the franchise uh, by saying that Judgment Day is inevitable and it removes the fact that these people have free will because uh, Judgment Day is going to happen all the time. I'm going to do my best to explain this as far as how my mind is interpreting this. So Zach thinks that Terminator 1 is a perfect movie for time travel because it's a perfect loop. And fine, I can accept that. But the fact of fate and choice and predestination goes out the window as soon as you add Terminator 2, which Zach also thinks fits in nicely, but it doesn't. Because uh, Judgment Day has to happen no matter what in order for any of this to happen. Therefore, they don't have a choice in the matter. Because none of the time travel can happen. And as soon as they prevent Judgment Day from happening, everything gets unraveled and could never have happened in the first place. Therefore, Judgment Day is inevitable. Just let me know when you want me to 
um, rant about this for forty five minutes. I'm just gonna well, lean back. I, I will say I will say this. I will say this. All right. The way Terminator Two ends is left left open to interpretation. Right. If there was never a Terminator Three, Four, whatever. You would you would never know. You could say they stopped it, or you could say no. It had to happen on August twenty ninth, nineteen ninety seven, like it was preordained. They found the arm and the gear. They got some old file. They all got Cyberdyne, Miles Dyson files. Right? They they figured it out regardless of what the Connors did. You could you could have said that. My problem is them changing the rules of how the universe and time travel work. Where it's like, oh, it's inevitable, but it's going to happen at this date. Or oh, it's inevitable, but now we're sending back different Terminators. Oh, it's inevitable, but. That that's where I fall into it, but I know you guys both really love the whole it's a time war thing, and that's that's perfect. That's perfectly valid for science fiction stories. I just thought some of the genius was in the simplicity of the simple time loops of the first two films, and left it at that. Once you get past that, you can have some fun with it, but I feel like it's 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 not in line with what was established in the first two films. So, and and I love all the charts you made, Max. Those are very interesting, <laughs> but they're really hell. They're hell of a lot confusing. And and if at some point in this conversation you could explain to me what the hell the time travel and time nexus points and all this stuff. Oh, and time, wh- <laughs> you <laughs> why? <laughs> why Kyle Reese? They stop the future, but then he has to go tell his younger self to remember something that they already stopped, even though that future is negated. It's just I just I I'm lost. I'm lost. Did did they have to? Serious question. Serious question. <laughs> Both of you answer this question. Both of you answer this question. Okay. He think they think they had to. Do, but I don't did, think they did. They thought they had to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't. Why, think they why they had did they to think either. they had to? Because they don't understand time travel like we do. <laughs> okay, so they they thought we need to tell my younger self in this timeline about Genesis and Skynet so that I can remember it. Mm-hmm. Right. That's that's their theory, which is not necessary because again, so I my thought process on the Terminator timeline is that. Every time they send somebody back in time, mm-hmm. it, it wipes out that previous timeline and starts a new one okay. where Judgment Day happens, and then the, then Skynet tries again, which wipes out that previous timeline, Which but Judgment Day happens, and so Skynet tries again. And okay. so I can I can get behind the thought of the the two timelines happening where he has the multiple memories. Okay, I can I can go with that disbelief, uh, the, or not disbelief, the suspension of disbelief. But can, no, they didn't fight need that to. Obvious logic flaw. What's that? <laughs> you can you can you can suspend your your ability to process that that is an absurd moment. It is absurd, but I can go with it because it's a mm-hmm. suspension of disbelief. It's like the Twilight Zone. Okay, we my, our friend Tom on the Twilight Zone podcast says the Twilight Zone. They've all got one element in each episode that you have to suspend disbelief on. And when you get two, it makes it hard. So I'm willing to suspend my disbelief on something ridiculous in a film to go with the story. But no, they didn't need to then go and have the young boy know that because that timeline has now been completely wiped out. Mm -hmm. Right? So they didn't need to tell him. I don't know. They felt they did. Because they even... That's what makes me mad about this movie, because they think they're being smart. They're like, oh, look, we set this up earlier. Look at us paying it off. But no, they're not, because they even in the film itself, they're like, the three of us, we are orphans in time. Anything can happen to us, and nothing will affect the future or the past. So the the rules are inconsistent. At least the other films, they were inconsistent with each other, but they were consistent within the rules of their own film. Genesis is inconsistent with all the other films of the franchise and within itself, and that is unacceptable. Okay, but I also don't agree with that. John Connor may have said, who says I can't kill my parents? Well, in my opinion, had John Connor killed his parents in this timeline... This is inside my head, all right? The time. <laughs> then, he, then it would have unraveled the timeline, right? It's like, really so fun he couldn't seeing this outside of my head. <laughs> Anyways, but that's that's what I think. I think that yeah, just because John Connor says I, I can kill you, just because they say that doesn't make him right. Because I think he's well, wrong. They, no, they have to do that for the they have to do that for the sake of the story to even work. Because if they didn't say that stuff, you'd be like you'd be like, well, this doesn't make any sense at all. Like. Uh, 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 they have to change their rules to fit their silly story they're telling with John Connor trying to kill his parents before he's even conceived. He shouldn't even exist because Sarah and 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 Kyle didn't have sex in 1984 and then conceived John Connor. He wasn't born in the future and all that. So even if they have a child now, it's not going to be the John Connor that w- that they're interacting yes, with. It is. So it's just it's all. What if it's no- a girl? What if it's a girl, Jane Connor? I think that's what Dark Fate's going to be in its own way, but <laughs> but it could just, be because the time no, they they haven't spent that much time together. It's forty eight hours. Okay, it's it forty eight hours. Uh, You're telling me the same sperm and the same egg. Yes, I am. Okay, and 
they've done it. They've done this in the books. They've had John Connor be a girl. So 